Right now, we are in Springfield, Illinois, the capital city of the great state of Illinois. And right now, I'm presently standing inside the Lincoln Museum. This is Capitalism 2012. I, I'm assuming that the Lincoln statue we're looking at was built to as close as we know as to his height and basic bone structure and carriage. Lincoln to this day remains the tallest American president at six feet four inches tall. And then you add a, a stovepipe hat on top of that. It also was a place where he kept his legal document. So it, it served a functional purpose, but also, let's admit it, it was an intimidation purpose. This is actually 200 year old wood oh, wow. <laughs> to construct the cabin, but this is a replication of his boyhood home in Indiana. He literally was born and raised in a log cabin. We hired a police forensic artist and an anthropologist. Oh, wow. And we took the earliest known images of Lincoln, and the result is so believable, no one ever comes up and says, how do you know what Lincoln looked like as a nine-year-old? I am a Lincoln fan. I'm one of the many, many, many Lincoln fans all over the world. I admire his use of the English language. I admire his strength and his bravery in times of great adversity. And I admire his steerage of America during arguably the most turbulent chapter in American history. Roughly one or two percent of, a, of the collection of any large museum or archive is on display right. because we've got more stuff than we have room for. Sure. Display space is a whole lot more expensive than storage space. Right. Right. So what we have in the Lincoln Collection is about 52,000 items. Most of that is books and papers, but it also includes about 80 works on oil on canvas and about 2,000 original prints and broadsides from the period, at least a thousand photographs, around three, four thousand manuscripts, and then the rest of it are books. There are 17 or 18,000 titles, not full books, a lot of them are little short pamphlets on Lincoln, which is the most of anybody in history as far as we know except for Jesus. And so th these are books that, that he is known to have read, read. some of or all of. Okay. Some of them is speculative. He read a lot of Shakespeare, yes. loved Macbeth, uh, loved Henry the Fourth. Here's something that's more famous than most things. This is the Gettysburg Address. Oh. Okay. You want to read it for us? Let's see, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. It's amazing how brief it is. It is. This is his presidential seal. It's made of ivory and the brass die, and there's red wax smeared all over it. There's his stovepipe hat. There are three of them in existence today. This is made of beaver fur. The other two are both made of silk. What do you think those are? The wear marks. Could it be? Yes, it is. Is it? I'm right about that. You're right. You see, in between the two, from underneath, there's the thumb mark. Yeah, no, that, that, right that makes sense. Good day, like that, right? Right. Okay. He hits that chord in the same spot every time. Sure. There's your evidence of how polite he was, right there. Right. Well, and how, uh, you know, what a good politician he was. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed our very privileged tour of the Lincoln Museum. But more than that, I hope it inspires you, no matter where you're watching this from, I hope it inspires you to make a visit to Springfield, Illinois, which is a gorgeous city anyway, and take some time and visit the Lincoln Museum. So later today, we'll be getting on our tour bus and we'll be going to Frankfort, Kentucky. I must say, I don't think I've ever been to the capital city of Kentucky. And what will be, 
I have no idea, but you better watch to find out.